Hi guys, Jason here, and I'm really excited for this one. In my hands is the Matchbox MB176 Skoda 130LR that was only available in the rest of world market, so excluding the US and Canada, between 1987 and 1989. What all models received, and what this would have had if all of the paint hadn't been scratched off, was a white rally livery that had the blue and red of the Czech flag patterned along the body. To date, it's the only Skoda the Matchbox have produced, and being available in limited markets, it's pretty hard to come by. This one is in a rotten state though, and I'm dying to get started. So this is a real 130LR with the design that is recreated on the casting. I'll talk more about the real car later, but this is my absolute perler of a model. It's not quite mint, but it gives you an idea of what my restoration is aiming to look like in around 10 minutes time. So the model is attached to the blue plastic base by two clips at the back and a rivet post at the front. Opening it up, you see it has gone unloved for some time levering the interior piece that contains the grille and rear engine as well, just reveals more crud for clearing. Luckily though, that should be resolved with a wash. I'm very aware here that the sticker across the back window is probably holding some shattered pieces together, so I'm gently trying to ease it out. This is the engine cover come spoiler. Eventually though, the screen is freed. This one hasn't discoloured as such, it came in either clear or tinted yellow variations. I think the tinted headlights that are part of the moulding look better than clear, giving a very 80s Eurobox vibe. That metalwork has been gouged on every surface, and needs some serious polishing. Inside, where paint remains, there are some markings from the original decals. But now I have to slowly slowly remove the flash sticker, and see what it's hiding or holding. Thankfully, it's just the very corner that has snapped, so it's certainly salvageable. That suspension spring is a hot mess. Anyway, here's my motley crew of discoloured parts. Detto antiseptic liquid will lift away any paint or pen markings from the plastics. Not sure there's much hope for this base piece though. Meanwhile, I drill a shallow 1.5mm width hole and tap it for my M2 screw to seal it back together later on. Next, I use a sanding attachment in my rotary tool to lose the rust on that spring. Then I can wash and clean up the plastics a bit. So this Skoda 130 dates back to 1984. The Czechoslovakian car company produced this rear-engined, rear-wheel drive, four-door saloon or two-door coupe until 1990, just prior to the raising of the Iron Curtain. All variants were equipped with a surprisingly snappy 58 horsepower 1300cc engine, harking back to the 60s, though power was whacked up by four horsepower on the 87 to 90 136 models, probably to help climbing hills. Despite being out of date by 20 years at its launch, the 130, or Estelle as it was known in the UK, was actually a big hit for Skoda. Production ended just as the company was being taken over by Volkswagen. But Skoda have a long and varied history, having established in 1859 as an arms manufacturer, and as the fifth oldest car manufacturer in the world. Now there's little I can do for this base in its exposed plastic form, so I lay on some primer with the intention of painting it blue. In spite of all my cleaning, it came up rather dull, but this Tamiya TS23 light blue should be the shot in the arm it needs. Dry and under studio lights, it should look the part. Next I turn my attention to revitalising these Matchbox 8 dot wheels, which for no particular reason are my favourite original design. The axles were really rusty, but a little sanding makes a huge difference. There's more to do on those later, but for now, the washed window piece is polished using Autosol Metal Polish. This should help eliminate some of the scratches that carried over from the gouged body. When the Autosol polishing is complete, I move on to the less strenuous task of Astonish polishing. This will give the translucent plastic some real sparkle. Citadel Gloss is my go-to on the wheels, which will restore the original black look. 
Not that there's much paint to strip, I still use some caustic soda on what's left. The metalwork needs a serious buffing with my wire brush. But already though, how much better does it look? I'll be using Tamiya's thicker grey surface primer later on, which I'm hoping will help fill in those grooves and gouges. I'm always wary of sanding and filing too much, as I don't want to erode away any of the cast detailing. Just watch this though. How simple, yet effective, is that to restore these wheels to like new? These Molotow Chrome pens are magic. Just a little dash on the ends of each axle will finish it off. Then I'll do the other side, this time in high speed. So the base is already at a stage where I can reassemble. With the chrome dried, I place each axle into its slot. Over the top of the central protrusion goes the metal spring for the suspension. Little test. The chipped piece of the window I shall reattach with some thick but clear Gorilla Gel glue. I briefly hold this in place and leave it overnight to fully set. It's quite a wintry spectacle in the garden today as I lay down my primer on the body and engine cover. Already much better looking on the scratch front. A few coats of white and the main bulk will be looking as good as new. Once that primer has set, the engine cover piece gets coated in red. And already, as ever, this shade looks gorgeous. I've got some standard automotive paint for the body, High Coats Gloss White. The grey of the primer is still peeking through slightly, but with further layers of paint that should completely cover over. These then are my reproduction decals that I'll apply. I'll leave a link in the description to the source. They are really, really good though. As I mentioned earlier, this livery is based on the real factory rally team's design. Through the 70s and 80s, Skoda Motorsport Works team were highly successful. They won their class at the British RAC Rally for a whopping 17 years in succession. The team achieved success with the 130's predecessor, the 120, until the mid-80s, when the 130LR edition was built to conform to the FIA's Group B rules of the era. Group B cars were banned at the end of the 1986 season, following some major accidents and fatalities. As such, the team reverted to the Group A spec 130L, until it was replaced by the front-wheel drive Skoda Favorite in 1989. Interestingly, the Group B band did not apply to the 130LR due to its 1300cc engine capacity. At the 1987 RAC Rally, it yet again won its class. The design on the casting is not a carbon copy of the real car's livery, but it is an excellent homage. So this rather boxy European family saloon sits very proudly as one of my all-time favourites. So as soon as I picked up one of these in suitably terrible condition ripe for restoration, I just had to dive in and take it on, and just look how it's shaping up. Well then, these are all of the parts that make up my salvaged Skoda. I place in my re-glued, cleaned and polished window and headlight piece, followed by the red engine cover. The grille, engine and interior piece follows, then finally, I line up the back of the base, push down over the front rivet post, and fetch my screw to seal it all together. Well, that has been quite a journey. Once upon a time, unbelievably, my Skoda 130LR looked like this. I don't know what happened to the paint, but no surface went untouched. Everything was either scratched or covered in marker, or better still, shrouded by a flash sticker. I absolutely had my work cut out for me for this restoration. So let's see how this sketchy Skoda now looks. I'm not one to blow my own trumpet, but I would never have said in a million years this could ever look as it did previously. There are still a few scratches that wouldn't budge on the headlights and windscreen, while the giveaway crack on the back screen is still there. Aside for the absolutely out of this world decals, 
My favourite parts are the wheels and just how easy it was to return them looking this shiny like new. Also, having removed the rust from the axles and suspension spring, it now has incredibly soft and spongy suspension and I love it. Again, I'll leave a link for the decals in the description in case anyone wants to give it a go themselves. So that is that from me for one of my favourite builds ever. I have loved this one and I've been so eager to share the results ASAP that this has leapfrogged several other builds. Here's my factory original next to my resto in the middle with my next project Skoda on the right. What do you think I should do with that car? Let me know in the comments. Please like, share and subscribe and check out my Patreon page too. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.